And there's two takes of this. I'm gonna put them both in this video, one after the other. You'll be able to click on the annotation to go to the part of the video where you want to, or look in the description for the timestamp. Basically, the reasons are, in the first one, I felt it went on a bit too long and was too rambly. In the second one, even though they both wound up roughly about the same time frame, after reading some of the plot summaries on Reddit and the emails between Sony executives about the plot and what Paul had planned, most of the video and about what I hope the film to be just seems to be nullified as well as my opinions on what the cast and crew were attempting. Although that still stands with the people making the film, it looks like there was more involvement from the executives. As well as there's another Ghostbusters film in the remake by Chris Pratt. I've linked all this stuff in the description as well as my post on Facebook about how I'm probably not going to be making a proper video or finishing any of these before the film comes out. I will be doing a review, but that's it. So, hope you enjoy, and I'm going to see how these scraps things turn out. These are very rough, so there may be things that I've said which probably might offend people because I've not cut out any of the bits yet that shouldn't be in there. Same with the video on there. It's it's just in this raw format. Enjoy. I'm piss off both camps with this video because I'm largely in the middle of both with my opinions. But hear me out, right? You might find some common ground with me. Just an FYI before we start, I won't be showing much or any of the trailer here due to the recent fair use issues with the hashtag WTFU. I don't want to risk a content ID strike just over me espousing my opinions on a trailer. If you want to watch the actual trailer, I will link it in the description. I'll probably use stills or maybe little clips, but I ain't going to be using a large amount that will be easily recognisable. Or if you want to watch my recent video on the fair use issues with YouTube, click the annotation on screen. So first things first, feminists would be finding this far less funny if it wasn't a Ghostbusters female reboot, and anti-feminists would probably find this chuckle worthy if it wasn't a Ghostbusters female reboot. Unless of course you're a fan of Paul Feig, in which case you would probably enjoy the film anyway, but who knows. Because if this film was actually just spook catchers with women, Nobody would really care, and it would go away like the mediocre film it looks to be. This is a big thing of people getting outraged, and others feeling gleeful that it's going to make people outraged. It's ridiculous. I'm not opposed to the idea of a female Ghostbusters in general, but I have my doubts over the way they've gone about this and the general, just, gist of the film, and from what we've seen so far, it just doesn't fill me with confidence about the whole thing. Now, why didn't they just make Ghostbusters 3, but with women? Is anybody else getting sick of this whole Hollywood reboot trend, where we've rebooted Total Recall, which was completely unnecessary, even though it was actually very faithful to the original film, and it, I actually enjoyed it, to be fair, but is anybody else getting sick of these reboots? Like, we're seeing another reboot of Batman, we're seeing another reboot of Superman, and this happens every 10 years. And where we're going to get to with the point with all of these reboots is that people will be remembering nostalgia for the sixth reboot that they watched of a film, initially basically the reboot they came into that established franchise with, as opposed to remembering the first incarnation of the franchise. So instead of getting nostalgia of the first Batman comic or the first Batman film, you're getting nostalgia over The Dark Knight's gritty reboot 20 years down the line. It just seems like Hollywood is running out of ideas for original films, and I'm getting a bit sick of it to be honest. I would like to see a new IP come out at some point. Now with this film, I can't actually find anything why the director or production crew have stated why they're doing it. In case you didn't know, Paul Feig is... I don't know how, if that's how you say that, or if it's Paul Fag. Um, he's the producer and director for the film, and he has a reputation for making spin-offs or homages to already established franchises featuring female leads, such as Spy, Bridesmaids, or The Heat. In all honesty, I think his films are about as funny as other Hollywood films. They're just something to chuckle at and be lightly entertained. I did like Spy in general. It wasn't something that made me laugh my ass off, but it was entertaining. It was quirky, it was slightly amusing. But you have to kind of like the main actress in that, who is also in this version of Ghostbusters. And the media seems to be referring to him as an accidental feminist, which to be honest just suggests to me that he's just making the films he wants to see, and people are attaching labels to him that he hasn't necessarily publicly stated himself, which is something we commonly see with the feminist movement. Now my concerns with the trailer are largely on the intentions of the cast and crew, 
as everybody seems to be using this as arguing points rather than just anything else, really. I mean, the media are using this to prove that everyone is sexist because they're annoyed it's a reboot and not Ghostbusters 3, and people who hate the idea are using this as an example of a feminist intrusion into an already established franchise. At this stage, I can only really say one thing for certain. It's a sort of funny reboot into an already established franchise. It doesn't look terrible, but it doesn't look amazing, and it's largely unnecessary. All the trailers seem to also ignore the fact that it's an all-female film. It never really advertises it, it just states as a new team without stuffing the agenda thing in your face too much, except for theming the jokes around it. The marketing isn't really from what I've seen outside of newspaper reports saying that this is the feminist reboot of Ghostbusters we've all been waiting for. If it wasn't for the fact that we knew the old film existed, the trailer would just look like any un other unfunny film and it would just disappear into obscurity. I mean, I've been saying for a while that if you want to see more women in Hollywood, then make your own films. Which is exactly what this guy has done and is doing and just does. That's his whole career. And his other films were fine. They weren't amazing, but they were pretty good as an attempt. And he's secured funding because of it. He's proved that there is a market for women in Hollywood just over the simple fact that people will invest in him. But I just hope this isn't a complete remake of the original with the women's. And it's just a homage. The hearse, the ghost in the library, and the subway shot in the trailer suggests that this is a reboot, and I think they're all directly taken from the original film. In all honesty, I just hope there's, it's got more going for it than just Ghostbusters with women, as that's just fucking lazy, and honestly will do the exact thing that feminists don't want to see. This is an example of something that will set women back in Hollywood if they fuck it up as it makes any potential investors in all-female films think of the 2016 failed Ghostbusters reboot before opening their wallets again to something like this. I really hope this, God, this is being made because Paul Feig wants to see an all-female Ghostbusters, and not because he knows it will fuck people off and get easy cash and outrage publicity, as I am sick of seeing professional victims consistently come out of any product or movement that's pro-woman. Because instead of just doing a rehash of the first film with women, they could do so much more. Off the top of my head, you could call it Ghostbusters 3 and literally have them just take over from the old team who are either dead or not interested in saving New York for a third time. This way you could even have Bill Murray advising them or some shit. Or have the ghostly apparitions happen in another city, but because the New York incidents were blamed on mass hysteria, the women are the only ones doing something about it, by somehow acquiring the old Ghostbusters tech and forming a new team. Whether this is because Bill Murray, again, comes into the city and tells them about it, or they get the schematics, or they just find footage of it somehow. I mean, we just have to look at the new Star Trek reboot. As much as I'm still sore about it, at least it did something original, even if it was nullifying the TV series completely from that timeline. They actually wrote their own storyline, and they did make it quite well, but it was a very good storyline. The only thing was that, and this is the only time I will argue for diversity, for the sake of diversity in anything, they didn't really do it as much as the original series was because Gene Roddenberry wanted a diverse cast because that was the universe they were living in. They were living in this like almost utopian earth where they made an effort to be diverse. I will be going to see this film, I just want it to be an interesting take on the franchise and not another female Thor, where the fact that they are women and people will be sexist about women is more important than doing an interesting twist on the story, production, look or feel of things. Just please, don't fuck this up. If you want to see more women in Hollywood, you'd use the opportunity to do something great and show the world why it's a good idea to include more women in Hollywood, as opposed to grabbing cash from a victim narrative or a lazy reboot with a different gender. I'm just so tired of seeing people create things based solely on identity as opposed to just creating something. The Gen Z versus Steven Universe argument is an excellent example of this, one having more substance than the identity politics surrounding it, because Gen Z's point was that this is the first trans character in a cartoon, whereas Steven Universe had trans characters and gender bent characters and characters of just weird in terms of androgynousness, but it never shoved it in your face, they just happened to be like that. Whereas Gen Z, the whole thing was about that and it was just shit. Like, Steven Universe had a bunch of other storyline benefits to it, and I really do want to get around to watching it at some point. If you want a really good analysis of the trailer, I would watch Skeptor's video. And honestly, it's a good summary of why, if the film is anything like the trailer, it will probably be a flop. So click the annotation on screen for that. 
and thank you very much for watching. I've actually recorded a bunch of videos today, so I expect them coming out soon. Like and subscribe if you want to see about the 10 new videos I'm releasing, and I will be going to see this film, and if you do, let's hope it's not crap. Woo! I swear to god all the stupid online drama will actually kill me one day. But seeing as I've got a lot of time to make a video, or plan one at least while I'm having an out of body experience, might as well do one that's relevant. Here's a bit on my reaction to the reaction to the new Ghostbusters trailers. I am so gonna get sued by the Fine Brothers. So if you haven't heard, there's been a remake of Ghostbusters with an all female cast happening. It's being released soon, and it's being directed by Paul Figg. So the trailers, right, you have two. The main trailer is just showing a chuckle-worthy Hollywood film that looks to reimagine the Ghostbusters original film, but with women, in a more light-hearted manner than the original one ever did. Because to be honest, the original film was kind of dark, and it was marketed as a supernatural film, but the comedy itself came more from the dry humour that was imposed by the characters as opposed to the actions they were taking and it was less slapstick than this one looks to be. And the international trailer shows the same thing, but has more of the character-driven comedy that we saw in the original film with the joke at the end about the logo. And both films show huge parallels to the original film, to the point where it's starting to look a little bit like plagiarism as opposed to a homage. However, I'm not really here to discuss what I think about the trailer, or an idea of an all-female Ghostbusters. But to give you a summary of my opinion, I honestly think they should have made this Ghostbusters 3 and had it as if they were taking over from the old team in the first two films. I'm not necessarily against the idea of an all-female Ghostbusters movie, but you really shouldn't just rewrite the first. That's just dumb, and I put that on the same level as as much as I did enjoy these. The Star Trek reboot where they are wiping out virtually everything that happened in the series. Now, of course, with the fact that they're re-recording a new series that are going with the original TV series timeline, it implies some form of multiverse, but we'll get to that later. But off the top of my head with this film, you could have had the New York incident chalked up to mass hysteria, so that when it happens in another city, these women are the only ones taking the sighting seriously until it's too late. Guest starring Bill Murray as his character from the first film in an insane asylum, what will this wacky quadruple do when the ghosts invade... Uh, shit. Uh, Ontario? Okay. But they seem to have ripped off a bunch of the original film in these trailers, such as the library ghost, the titanic ghost horde, the secretary of the guest possessed, and the hearse ambulance thingy but it's all just gender flipped. But moving on to the reception and response just to the film and the trailer in general, I won't be addressing the moderates in the debate, or just normal Paul Feig fans. I don't know how he pronounce his name. Besides the point, I will be addressing two groups of people, feminists or social justice types who are using this as a way to annoy anti-feminists or go, hooray, we're smashing the patriarchy. Anti-feminists who are claiming this is a deliberate feminist intrusion just to annoy them or just for the sake of trying to take away the film industry and change the film industry on a massive scale. And before we start properly with this video, if at any point in this debate you think I'm focusing on your side specifically, wait until the end. I do address both feminists and anti-feminists throughout the video. So before you leave a dislike because I criticise your cause, realise I'm doing this to both of you because you are acting like children. Because goodness me, there is such a shitstorm around this film on both sides, with accusations of racism over Leslie Jones' character, and the implied forced gender diversity over the whole film. Everything I see from the cast and crew tells me a story of people wanting to make a film and being taken advantage of by modern outrage culture. As an explanation to why this film is being made, it isn't just a manufacture outrage culture, the director. Paul's projects that he does for fun, as far as I can tell, are putting a spin on an already established genre by placing female leads into that genre, the Heat and Spy being examples of this. I enjoyed Spy. It was genuinely funny, and Melissa McCarthy, who is the lead role of Spy and in Ghostbusters, she fit the role well. The story was quite multi-layered and had a lot of elements going for it, and it had a genuinely good twist to it, with some great character development, which I'm not going to spoil the plot, but the general gist is that an unfit handler that could have been a good agent is sent into the field to recover a the agent that she was handling, 
And there's lots of implied things with the relationship between her and the agent she was handling and what's happening in the wider plot and whether she should have been a handler or an agent in general. And it's just, I, I just enjoyed it. It's difficult to actually explain the film without having seen it because the trailers play up the slapstick comedy as opposed to the actual script writing and multi layered film that it actually is. I wouldn't say it's rolling on the floor funny, but it's interesting and it will make you giggle a little bit. Which Paul, in making these films, is proving that there is a market for women in Hollywood because he gets the money and investment for it, and then they perform well at box offices. Which, regardless of which side you're on, should be a good thing. It proves, essentially, that society in general is not sexist towards women, and it gives women more time in the spotlight. If you're an anti-feminist, great, because it proves that society isn't sexist. I'm hearing a lot from radical feminists. And if you are a radical feminist, then great, because women in media, whoop de doo you want that. Like, I trust the director and the cast to create a light-hearted comedy, as I haven't really seen much from the cast themselves crying racism or sexism over the backlash. In fact, everything I read from Paul Figg is pretty good. He might be a feminist, I can't find him directly saying so, or find a news site putting that term on him and words in his mouth. The phrase accidental feminist has legitimately been typed about him, and this is something we see that annoys me a lot from that spectrum of media, where they are espousing a label onto people that don't want it. You saw it with the woman from the Big Bang Theory, I think you saw it with Jennifer Lawrence as well, where it seems to be the new thing to ask people, are you a feminist? Or it seems to be the new thing to focus on, it's getting stupid. But if he is a feminist, he seems to be the sensible kind, as he directly says there is a problem with pay parity in Hollywood, which there kind of is, but, and this is a big but before you go and dislike the video and leave me a comment, it's down to what typical women's roles pay, as well as what their agents will ask for. In fact, it's worth reading his interview in The Wrap, where, and I may not 100% agree with this, he talks about how we may have a chicken and egg situation where high paying roles aren't being offered to women, so Hollywood will never pay them those rates, as they won't go above what the actor was paid on their last film. In making this film, he's doing exactly what I want to see from feminists and gender activists. Making your own damn shit instead of petitioning others to make it for you. He's gone and secured the funding for this on his own, he's wrote the script on his own, and he's got the cast and crew together on his own as a producer. Like, I just hope he does a good job of this, as if, hypothetically, his motives are to profit from outrage culture, he will make sure that investors are more sceptical of all female lead films in future, because they will remember this film before opening their wallets. This film here, if it massively cocks up, can legitimately set women back in Hollywood in a big way. But, I was also quite pleased with Leslie Jones' statement about her black character being streetwise. Outside of demographics and monetary trends within race in America, which I could point out means his character is representative of the black community in general, I will let her statement stand on its own. She is took to Twitter to say, and I'm paraphrasing here, We all Ghostbusters, why does it matter? Which, surprise surprise, we saw a big backlash from social justice types, and just a big hypocritical shitstorm which we saw condemnation of this behaviour from the director of himself, Paul Figg. Which all of this suggests to me that the cast and crew are trying to prove to people that they can make a successful all-female Ghostbusters movie. Criticising it based upon gender, or praising it based upon gender, is just playing into what Sony wants you to do, which is to create free press and social media coverage through outrage culture. By all means, criticise how it looks only mildly funny and the jokes seem a little forced or slapstick, as opposed to the dry character-driven humour we saw in the original. Criticise how it seems to be a direct rip of the original, as opposed to a new plotline. Criticise how the trailer follows the same structure as the Pixels flop. But leave gender politics out of this, even aside from the fact that it doesn't seem relevant to me. You'll just play into the free marketing campaign Sony is banking on. As for feminists who are supporting this mainly because it's women in films, don't. Praise it based upon excellent practical and digital effects we've seen so far. Praise it based upon the two funniest jokes we've seen in the trailers, such as the breast logo joke. Praise it based upon the great costume and set design we've seen so far. And even praise it based upon the new soundtrack, which is controversial but I like it, or the solid colour grading and general production professionalism we've seen at this point. But please, gender debaters and journalists, realise when you are being played and calm the fuck down. I just hope that this is as good as a Star Trek reboot which they've changed enough to justify its existence, or alternatively, if this is a rip of the original, I hope there's some form of implied multiverse as there is in the Star Trek franchise and the Marvel Universe. If this is some form of implied multiverse where gender roles are switched in everything, and that's what they're doing, that would be pretty cool to be honest with you. But I'm actually kind of excited to see it now a little bit, just more out of curiosity than anything else. So I guess I fell for the marketing campaign.